Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can create vortex shapes with dots that sort of are sucked into a vortex using 3D in Illustrator. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're going to try and achieve here. What I've got here is a set of circles that are being sort of pulled into this 3D vortex. So you can see that the circles are going round in a spiral direction, but they're actually being distorted as they go and they're sort of being sucked into this 3D shape. So in doing this we need to create the pattern that we're going to use and then we need to map it to a 3D shape in Illustrator. I'm starting this project with a new document that's 1000 by 1000 points in size, but yours can be any size that you want. I'm going to choose a different colour for this one, so let's actually make this one red dots are being sucked into our vortex. So let's go and get a red to use. I don't want any stroke, but I do want a fill colour. I'm going to start with a small ellipse here. I'm going to hold the shift key as I drag this out into a circle. And now we're going to repeat this. So with it still selected, I'm going to choose Effect, Distort and Transform and then transform. And what I want is about 40 of these shapes, so I'm going to select 39 for my copies because with my original that's going to give me 40. I'm going to click the preview on and I want these to be separate dots, so I'm going to increase my horizontal value until these dots are all separate and so that there's a bit of spacing between them. So I think this is a pretty good sort of setup here. I know that I've got a bit more of my document here to one side. Now I can't see this very clearly, so let's just click OK for now and let's just make this document a little bit bigger so I can see the end of my strokes. Now that's fairly critical because what I want is for my dots to be starting to move in a downwards direction. So I have something that I can use to line these up with. I'm going to target the line segment tool and I'm just going to draw out a horizontal line. So I'm just clicking and dragging with the line tool and I'm holding the shift key as I do that because that constrains this to a perfectly horizontal line. Now my line has no fill and no stroke so let's just target the stroke and let's make it a dark colour so I can see exactly what's going on here. And I'm just going to move it up a little bit, so target the selection tool and just move it a little bit up. And then click away from it. Now I want this line of dots to move so that it's just under this line here. And the reason for this is that I want to create a symbol that is going to wrap around my shape in a spiral. If I just create rows and rows of dots, they're actually going to create circles around my vortex. And if I want it to be a spiral, I have to tip this slightly as it goes. So let's go back to selecting this shape and let's go to our Appearance panel by choosing Window and Appearance because this allows me to get back into that transform effect. Here it is here, so I'm just going to click on it to reopen this dialog because I want to make a slight change to this. I want this to start moving down in a vertical direction, so let's click here on vertical. Let's make sure we have preview selected and I'm just going to press the up arrow key here because I really only want it to move a small amount and it's just moved one point and that's probably just a little bit too much. So let's just change this to 0 0.9 points. And you can see that this is now tipping so that this shape here, by the time it rotates all the way around, is just under this line here. So I'm thinking that's a pretty good amount of movement for my shape, so I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to target this shape again and I'm going to transform it a second time. So let's choose Effect, Distort and Transform, Transform. And we're being warned this time that we're applying a new instance of the effect. So it, we're not editing the previous one, we're applying a new effect, which is exactly what we want to do. So I'm going to click to accept that. And now this time I want to move this entire shape here 
down and I want to create repeated versions of it, I think something like another 14 copies. So I'm going to type 14 in my copies. I have preview turned on and what I want to do is to move this shape in a vertical direction. So I'm just going to start increasing the vertical value and that's all I'm looking at doing and moving it until my dots look like about that. What this is going to give me is that this dot is going to go all the way down here and then it's going to start again here. So I need this dot to be about the same distance below this line as this one is here. And you can see I'm not quite there yet. So I'm just going to increase this value a little bit more until I've got it right. So again, the spacing between this second dot here and the line needs to be the same or just a little bit more than the spacing between this dot and the line. I still don't think I'm there quite. So I think at 34 points I've got about the rotation that I want. So I'm going to click OK to accept that. And this is the shape that I want to wrap around my vortex. So I'm going to have to first of all get rid of the line. So I'm going to target my line and just press delete. Then I'm going to select this shape here and I'm going to choose Object Expand Appearance. And that just expands it to all its little component parts. And now I want to make a symbol of this. So I'm going to choose Window and then Symbols because symbols are what I can map to 3D objects. You can't map a pattern to a 3D object, can't map anything other than a symbol. So I'm just going to, with everything selected, just drag and drop this into the symbols panel. And I'm going to call this dots. And then click OK. I don't have to worry about any of the settings in this dialog, just click OK. That's all we need to do. And here is our new symbol. So for now, I can just move this shape well out of the way. I just don't need any part of it. Now we're ready to create the shape that we're actually going to map the symbols onto. So I'm going to target the pen tool and I'm going to draw a triangle. It's going to come from this point here all the way down to here. It's going to go across here. And then I'm going to go back up to the finishing point. And I'm going to target the direct selection tool because that will allow me to adjust these points. Now in particular, I want to adjust this point. So I'm going to target it and click on the convert anchor point because I want this to be a bit bendy along the top of the shape. So I'm just going to target the direct selection tool, hold Alt as I drag this handle up because I want this to be flat and then just drag this handle under. So I've got a slight curve to my vortex. And I can select and adjust this one too if I want to. So again, holding the Alt key as I drag on this allows me to just adjust this one handle, not adjusting its pigeon pair. And then I've got the second handle adjusted. So this is the shape I'm now going to create a 3D rotation from because this is going to give me the suck into the vortex look. With the shape selected, I'll choose Effect and then 3D. And we're going to choose Revolve. The first thing to do is to turn preview on because you want to see what's happening here because if it's not right, you need to see that it's not right before you go any further. And right now it's not correct. It's actually revolving from the left edge of the shape, not the right edge of the shape. So I'm just going to target here the right edge of the shape. And here we're getting now a little bit more of what we want. And what I want is this internal here. I want to be able to see this shape from the top down. So instead of off axis front as my position, I want to see the top. And this is the top here. And now I want to rotate it a little bit so that I can see into it so it's not perfectly flat. So I'm going to rotate it a little bit. Perhaps adjust this rotation here. So you can start to see that this is the edge that we're looking at here. And this is a steep edge here and a very flat edge over here. 
and you can continue to rotate this until you see pretty much what you want to see here. So I'm just looking at being able to see an interesting curve in my vortex or what's going to be my vortex and you can continue to work on this until you get the panel that you want to see here. Once you've got that in place, we're going to click on Map Art. And Map Art allows us to map a piece of artwork, our symbol, to one of the surfaces in this shape. Now, this is not the surface that we want because it's not highlighting the area I want to see. So I'm just going to target a different surface and see if that looks like the surface I'm looking for. And this is another surface. So I think it's probably surface 2 that is going to give me the action I want. So I'm going to click on this here and just grab my dots. And I'm going to size my dots so that they fill this shape here. And you can see that this has mapped them onto that vortex shape. This is the plane in our shape that is giving us this action that we want to see. Now, I need to drag these out so they perhaps look a little bit more like circles. And to do that, I'm going to need to resize my dialogue so that I can make sure that everything is joining up the way I want it to join up. So I'm just going to see if I can see everything clearly here. I want to make sure that this set of symbols is completely covering this gray area here. So I want to position it so that my dots are sort of starting inside the shape and then finishing just over the edge of the shape. So I'm just going to drag this in and drag this out here and just make sure that it's sized really, really well. And that will make sure that if I butt against both edges of this underlying shape here, that my dots will actually wrap properly around my shape and I won't get a seam. So once I've got everything positioned, if I'm pretty happy with that for now, I can just click OK and then OK again, because this will allow me to come back into my object and just make sure that I've got exactly what I want. I can move this triangle and moving the triangle, what I'm doing is just moving the shape. Now I'm not really happy with this red fill. I'd really like it to be something more like white. But that's easy to do because the fill can just be adjusted. And here you can see I've got a bit of a seam. So I am a little bit concerned about what I've got here. I'm not totally happy about this join here. Well, we can solve that. Again, going back to the Appearance panel, with this shape selected, here is my 3D Revolve. So I'm just going to click on that to reopen my 3D panel, go back to my Preview, go back to my Map Art, and go back to the surface that I applied the artwork to. And here I'm going to need to just make some adjustments just to see if in pulling this symbol a little bit further apart, I can adjust this seam so it's a little bit less obvious. Now I think I actually rotated my shape at some stage and I'm not really happy with that. So let's just clear that and let's go back and get the dots and make sure that this time when I size them, I don't rotate them out of alignment. So again, just making sure that they're sized to fit that and just move it up so that the entire symbol is all the way over the area that I'm mapping the symbol to. Here's my seam. So I can see my seam really, really clearly. I just need to drag out here on my symbol to make sure that I start to lose that seam. So I might even just drag in a little bit on this side and make sure that that seam is consistent all the way through and to hide it as much as I can in my shape. And when I'm happy with that, I'll just click OK and then OK again. So here's my circles disappearing into a vortex. And having created that, I can now create that as a square by moving it into position and then just cropping it or clipping it. So I'm going to select here the Rectangle tool and I'm going to drag out a square 
or something of a rectangle that is big enough to cover the shape that I'm working on. Well, if I actually went for a rectangle, I'd probably be able to get a little bit more of this shape. So let's draw out a rectangle here. I want to get as much of this curl as I can. And when I've done that, I'm going to turn off the fill so I have no stroke, no fill. Let's go back into the layers panel because here we have the dots. This is the dots for the symbol. But here are my path, my 3D path. And this is my rectangle. So if I select both of these and choose Object, Clipping Mask, Make, I'm going to crop this just to a rectangle. So we have this vortex shape that looks as if it's dots disappearing into a vortex that are being pulled in that direction. And we've done that by creating a pattern in Illustrator and then mapping it to a 3D object. Now this 3D object is completely editable. We can go back to our path at any time, target the path, select it, go back into our 3D Revolve, turn our preview on, and we can reshape this. So we can twist this and bend it to give ourselves the kind of mapping that we want, the kind of vortex shape that we want to create. And all of this is a live effect inside Illustrator. That rectangle is just giving us our clipping mask. And within that, we can reshape our curl our sort of spiral vortex effect to suit our own preferences. Just click OK when you're done. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this Illustrator video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com for more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.